I was four years old when we were attacked on Yom Kippur. I remember us running to the shelter in Tel Aviv. It's very concrete for a child. They want to kill us. And I really didn't understand why do they hate us so much. Nasser, my brother, was younger than me. He was about 14 years old. The war that they were talking about was on the ground. أنا ما بعرفش كيف هذيك اللحظة قدرت أتحمل الموقف. كان عندي حلم إني أكون مقاتل في صفوف الثورة الفلسطينية يعني وأكون جزء من الكفاح المسلح ضد الاحتلال. كنت مستعد إنه أموت في سبيل هاي الأفكار. I was admitted into the most prestigious units in the Israeli army. I was extremely proud. I knew my father was proud. صرت أفكر كتير إيش أنا دوري في الحياة هنا فاخترت أن أعمل عملية استشهادية <تصفيق> زي ما كمام بس بشوت مرجيش تغور كاخا مرجيش تغور مشو يتكشر وأمار شيش فلسطينيم شيش مخنم لي بقاشي تانا كنت كتر خايف أنه قد يكون في مصيدة يعني هون we find that we actually have something in common. That willingness to kill people you don't know. عندهم قوة جميلة مش طبيعي. بدي يجي كم واحد من المقاتلين أجل السلام رفضوا الخدمة يغيروها. إذا أنت كريت عن نزول مانديلا، آه، شخص لحاله غير دول وغيره كم كم كل الدين وغير كل النظام. وأنت بتعرف إنه شخص لحاله. كل شخص لحاله كيف كده يسوي هيك؟ كيف كده يسوي؟ أنا بفقدش الأمل في فكرة إن السلام إنه ما في طريق ثاني غير السلام. Hello, this is Nice Wonder, and you're watching the Now Man Show. And I'm here with Marcina Hale and Suleiman Khatib from the movie Disturbing the Peace. Uh, Marcina Hale is the co-founder of Reconsider. She's also the co-producer of the film. She has degrees in both media and psychotherapy, and it was her vision to utilize film as a catalyst to create experiences that evoke thought and conversations that both challenge and inspire a way of relating to live more dynamically. Suleiman Khatib is the co-founder and director of Combatant for Peace. Raised in the village of Hizmi in northeast Jerusalem, he joined the Fatah movement when he was 12 years old. At the age of 13, he was arrested for attacking two Israelis, served 10 years in Israeli prison. He's now the co-founder as well as the current director of Combatants for Peace. I'm here with Marcina Hale, also Suleiman Khatib. Uh, thank you very much for being on the Now Man Show. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure. Now, Marcin, let's start with you. Um, what inspired you to make this film? Well, the inspiration actually, uh, Steve Apcon, who is a director and producer, was asked to actually go over to Israel-Palestine to find out if there was any new story that was over there, anything that had been missed about how to end the conflict. And so he actually met with many different groups over in Israel-Palestine and came to meet the combatants for peace. At the same time, we, uh, as partners, Steve and I, started Reconsider, which asked two main questions. It's, what kind of world do you want to live in, and what kind of life do you want to create? And so when we met the combatants, what they really were, their essential line was, we're taking responsibility for our own creation. And so that's very much in line with the kind of work that we wanted to do, and the, in the kind of nonviolence and space that they've been holding for over 10 years has been unbelievable, so the story, which is right there, yeah. Now, when did you actually start the production? Well, we've been uh, doing this production for about three and a half years now. So, how did that process continue? I mean, once you knew the story, where, where did you begin? How did you meet uh, Suleiman? Well, I think, first of all, I didn't get to meet the combatants for a while. Oh. What I worked with is, is the story over and how it was going to happen. So the idea, because my background is media and uh, psychology. Mm -hmm. So the question was, could we make a film that was an experiential event? 
so that it uses the, the combatants and the, their work, but it actually transcends all narratives. And it's an example of how all of us get stuck in narratives. So for us, it's been, it evolved because we weren't even sure how it would work. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't actually until we presented the film to the first large audience, which was an Ebert Fest, which is 1,500 people that saw it. And when it ended, they were all standing on their feet applauding. It was unbelievable. And we knew at that point that we had created what we wanted to do, which was the transformational experience, using their stories as an example. I, and to, to say, speaking personally, I just was incredibly moved. And I have to say, it's one of the most profound movies I've ever seen. And thank so thank you so much for doing that, just coming from me. Um, Suleiman, let's talk to you now. Uh, what, what an amazing story. I mean, what? I mean, obviously, you, your background was came from a much different perspective than the transformation that you went through. Tell us a little bit about that transformation. What happened for you? Uh, you know, I, I born and grew up uh, uh, under the uh, uh, ongoing conflict. And uh, when I was 14, uh, the only way I knew to uh, resist the situation, to change the cycle, was uh, the violence. And through uh, 10 years and a half in jail, I was arrested when I was 14. Uh, I uh, participated and organized a food hunger strike with other prisoners, political, mm -hmm. political prisoners. Mm -hmm. That's how the first time for me to know, the first experience to know about nonviolence and that, yes, nonviolence work. Of course, later on I read about, you know, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Mandela, and all these mm -hmm. heroic people. And, you know, like, uh, it was a long journey to, uh, uh, let's uh, join hands with uh, Israelis that supposedly our enemy and to create alliances and to create a new space and third narrative that can hold uh, different uh, stories and different narratives that can be a good for our future both sides Palestinians and Israelis. So it was it was a process for you like I, I know in the film it talks about um, you did you see Schindler's list while you were in prison did was was that kind of the beginning of it or or was it uh, something else uh, well actually reading and watching the film about the Holocaust and reading about the Holocaust uh, it's it's part of the process it's a long journey as I said like even you know I knew a little Hebrew from home because my father spoke Hebrew fluently as well mm -hmm. because my family lived around Jerusalem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, in jail I learned Hebrew under the title learn your enemy's language mm -hmm. and that's it's uh, maybe later on in combatants for peace a bunch of Palestinian and Israelis that knows Arabic and Hebrew Either Palestinians were in jail, that's how they know Hebrew, either Israeli ex-military people that they know Hebrew because they need to work for, you know, against the enemy. And that's like, unfortunately, that's how we learn languages of each other in most of the cases. But this helped us a lot of uh, transforming the knowledge that we have and our personalities. You know, once you learn the language and the enemy is not enemy anymore, it's not uh, some unknown person and culture anymore, you know, you know, the you read about the narrative and the culture and the history and the connection to the place. So that enabled me to see the uh, conflict from different sides and it opened my mind. How did you find this group of uh, like the ex the army guys from the Israeli army and that, that was, was that an already existing group? How did you find out about them to reach out to them? Uh, firstly, I knew about this group from the media because mm -hmm. I, I stayed... I Television media? Uh, I, I read Hebrew and Arabic, so I, I follow the Israeli media as well, mm -hmm. our media, the Arabic media. And second, this was also another process of building trust among uh, each other. The meeting was the meetings, the first meetings, which mm -hmm. took place for a year. It was secret meetings mm -hmm. in Bethlehem area, illegal meetings. Because well, there, there were multiple meetings, and the film showed the one for the first one or focused on the first one? Yeah, the film shows the first meeting, but uh, we had um, so many meetings, underground, secret meetings, mm -hmm. to build the trust because, you know, we supposedly uh, meet the enemy of each side uh, with mistrust, and every side thought these guys maybe are not real, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful. We are in a conflict zone, so mm -hmm. there is no trust there. It was the second Tifada also. The time was very important to say here. And from there, we didn't know where this was going anyway. So ultimately, this in our year time, we uh, name it 
combatants for peace after a lot of discussions. You know, when you put yeah. Israelis and Palestinians in the room, yeah. there are million Iranians, so it was not easy also to agree on the name and the slogan and all the principles. But mainly, it was main big principle that both sides reach the point after fighting, after being in the army or being in jail, there is no military solution for our conflict. We both are there to stay there. And we have to find a way to manage with each other. And this way is the only way, which is a joint non-violence, culture and path and struggle. And that's what we do. And that's what we inspired by even what happened in the US back in the days with Martin Luther King freedom marches. And that's what we do now every month, actually. And, and the real solution is the human solution. Yeah, it's, you know, in a conflict zone, like not just in Palestine, Israel, everywhere. Yes. The people don't see each other as a human, first of all. And that's uh, the way how they could dehumanizing each other and hate and kill and all that. And uh, it was, uh, I would say from my experience, it's very important to reconnect to our humanity. And, you know, what this uh, revolutionary person in South America said, stay human. Mm -hmm. That's one uh, the principles that I really believe, including with people that you don't agree with and you have to engage with them. And then, you know, the f enemy, our common enemy is the fear, actually, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from That's each right. other. This is a big thing because many Palestinian Israelis and other people around the world, if you take it to other, other conflict, they don't believe that the other side want peace anyway. Right. That's the majority. So we came as a proof that there are people on both sides, the majority, Yes. Want to live normally, like yes. in dignity, like everywhere in the world, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And and you wanted to basically rebel against the mainstream narrative, yeah. which which I, the the film portrayed very well. Also, you know, showing the different sides of the television media news. Yeah, of course. Uh, I I have to say I'm really patient person. I think nonviolence teach us a lot of patience, mm -hmm. and also. Uh, giving a space for people to transform and to take their own journey as we did our own journey. So uh, to exit the comfortable zone where you see things black, white, we are the good guys, they are the bad ones. Mm -hmm. That's how we grow up, like every side. Mm -hmm. And that's the easiest thing to be where. Where I am now is the not easy, but it's liberating your mind and soul because it's all based on love and action, actually. That's simply where we are. And I, and I love the theater of the oppressed, you know, the creating the puppets and the whole artistic thing and literally going out there on the streets and inviting people to come and, and see your performances. That's the best way to get in people's faces, to change the narrative, to get them to think, correct? And actually that's important because, you know, where we live in Middle East, young people are attracted to military, mm -hmm. uh, even military movies, mm -hmm. since we live, we are not far from Hollywood here. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why our group is a unique, because our background can attract a lot of young people. And using the theater of the oppressed, actually, is a way to, because the anger is there. Mm -hmm. And we just transform this anger from, you know, negative behaviors and uh, hate to a positive action through theater of the oppressed, through bread and puppets and all kind of techniques that we use which is challenging, but we are so far succeeding like step by step to have more Palestinian, more Israeli joining us and building alliances with other groups and to be seen by the mainstream media. In July, we were uh, in the main Israeli media like for 11 minutes, one report in Channel 2. Right. In Palestinian TV, we spoke there as well. We brought two ex, uh, um, uh, ex fighters from Ireland, from both sides, to show this is our conflict, it's not the only conflict while people are trapped and feel this is the forever and it's never possible, but that's how every people in every conflict feel. So we been noticed and as you know, like in nonviolence, they ignore you and then they try to stop you and then they join you. And that's what that's we right. believe, but it take a long time. We need patient. That comes from Nelson Mandela, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah I was in jail yeah. while Mandela was in jail at the same time, so we were reading for him. Did you did you learn uh, nonviolence uh, training through the Mandela idea? Is that how that how you found how did you discovered that? Uh, among other you know theories, you know Khen Alon, my friend and brother and co-founder of Combatants for Peace, he's mm -hmm. the leader of the theater of the oppressed in Combatants for Peace. He learned that uh, in Brazil that because the theater of the oppressed founded by a Brazilian person, actually. Mm -hmm. I forget his name now, sorry. 
But uh, so we, we learn about all the theories in Afghan, the Martin Luther King, the freedom march that we do now, we take the name from the freedom marches that used to happen here mm -hmm. uh, during Martin Luther King time. Fantastic. And of course, like nonviolence exists. We were talking about this, me and Marcina, before we came here. Yes. It exists in every culture, yes. in our culture as well. We had a principle of sumud in Arabic, we call it mm -hmm. steadfast. And uh, steadfast, steadfast, uh, smooth. Mm -hmm. That's why my sister's name smooth because mm -hmm. when she born, we were in jail. Me and my brothers, two of my brothers, oh, wow. and in Judaism and Islam and uh, you know in uh, Christianity where you know we live, where the Abrahamic three religion mm -hmm. came, yes. and uh, in our political culture, then violence exists. The problem that the mainstream media doesn't really report, you know, any positive action you know people unfortunately sometimes in the media some i don't want to blame the media it's our problem but uh, they report more violence and the killing and uh, that's why we need to continue our struggle in a bigger scale worldwide uh, to change the world i would say slowly and this is not for ultimate goal yes. it's a struggle for justice and freedom and longing for a better world that everybody want to live now, going forward here now, uh, what, and you can chime in on this too as well, Marcina, what do you think the greatest challenge is with this message? I'll start with you, Marcina. Uh, first of all, it takes, as he says, it's a process of transformation. You know, so the film shows transformation is happening instantly, but it's something that really we need to work at. And so the film, some people can take it as a feel-good film, and it's not a feel-good film. It's a, actually an activist film. So it's to inspire us to continue the process. So we're really working on partnering with a lot of different organizations and the Theater of Repress and um, many other nonviolent organizations to help start teaching this. This should be, in my opinion, taught in all the schools. Absolutely. Everywhere. And so it is, first of all, bringing voice to it. Usually hate has a lot of, louder voice than love. And it's though our responsibility for you know creating a new message, getting it out there, and following up with everybody that can actually join us. So, so I think it's just about pulling together, really inspiring one another, as we inspire each other. And now, what's the what's your greatest challenge? I mean, you said just moments before we started this interview that you're going back to Palestine. Uh, <laughs> that's your home. So, what what when you go back, what do you see your greatest challenge being? now after all this experience? Well, there are a number of challenges, I have to say, uh, uh, in our road, in our way for uh, non-violence uh, culture. Um, part of it, you know, like people you got used to live in a certain way, and to make the change, people are scared, afraid from change. People want to keep the status quo, especially a lot of people with interest, you know, politicians and uh, companies and women companies and the uh, uh, regional uh, power and world system sometimes. So I would say there is like a huge challenge in front of us to change the system. And I think it's the American election is a proof of that, actually, even in America. Yes. The election was really about changing the system. That's my feeling. And uh, in our part as well, you know, people don't want to make their freedom from the tomorrow, the unknown tomorrow. So we need to struggle more and more. I agree a lot with Marcina, actually. I wish to wake up in the morning to see that the Palestinian, Israeli, and American, and elsewhere education system teach about what's so called the other narratives and language and culture, and also teach uh, non-violence culture <coughs> as a way of communica communicating with each other. Actually, I'm going in July, in January, <coughs> with this great uh, woman training uh, nonviolence communication in Palestine. There are many more groups coming on the table teaching nonviolence communication, teaching nonviolence struggle, and coming together. I'm really optimistic, and uh, we are aware of the challenges. We just need a bunch of people to hold this vision, uh, to stand very strong and firm in front of the waves that coming and the challenges that coming. And I feel combatants or bees reconsider and some other people and organizations that I have no time now to name them are strong alliances in that uh, movement. Creating alliances and working together. Sure. Exactly. That's I mean, if you look at our budget, our military budget, for example, yes. we have $38 billion right now that have been allocated to Israel for defense. Mm -hmm. 
and a part of that money, at least, at least a large majority of it, has to be used to buy U.S. weapons. And so you can see that our own involvement in perpetuating the system is right there. And so our own education around what it is, and, and it is literally, if we would even spend a fraction of that money on educating for nonviolence and in promoting this kind of work, I mean, even we, we sort of joke around, we thought we'd sell a bomb to be able to get our message out there because it's, it's actually easier to do that, it seems, than yes. to actually get funding to really work with nonviolence. And so you have to wonder what we really value at that point. There's, there's a lot of, I use the key word, uh, I love the word transformation, because that really is what we saw in this film. Like you said, it's a, it's a process, but you really showed that, how there can even be conflicts within families and amongst friends, because there isn't you know, better communication, or maybe that light bulb doesn't go off, or it goes off at different times for, all, for each of us. So focusing on that transformation and showing it in film and, and doing it in theater and and rallies and bringing people together. What, what do you see next for the combatants of peace? What, is there, are there certain projects you already have in addition to what you're talking about? Yeah, for the next year, a uh, reminder, it's a 50 years of the Israeli occupation yes. on, and, and, uh, wow. and part of our people. Uh, and this is uh, important even uh, actually in Judaism. My Israeli religious friend talked about it. Mm -hmm. In 50 years, you have to make change. Mm -hmm. Yes. And actually, there are many organizations coming along together now in creating a huge nonviolence movement that exists already, that needs support, that needs solidarity. And hundreds of Americans, actually, mainly Jewish, coming over in May to do direct action, uh, nonviolence direct action there with us. We had also the Alternative Memorial Day to respect the victims of both Palestinians and Israelis in the Memorial Day the, the, in April 30. This is, we, we do this every year. Last year we have 4,000 people Excellent. attending our event. Excellent. So we will continue with our freedom marches and with our lectures, with building more groups because Combatants for Peace is based on local groups, yes. half Palestinian, half Israeli, sharing the power within the organization. It's not Israeli control as typical story, I'm honest. It's really equally with the responsibility. And that's very important to say because I don't want my side of the story, the Palestinians, to keep feeding the victimhood yes. and the negativity. And that's, that's not good right. for any side. That's why in Combatants for Peace, uh, we, had, we share the power and it's half, half in every level you want. And this is, we're carrying the message ahead and we're growing and we need uh, more and more people to join us and to cooperate with us and to carry the message ahead. Marcina, what inspired, the, now the title of the film is Disturbing the Peace. Uh, what, what inspired that title? I love this story because it's actually, they have marches every month and they use puppets and there's kids there and so forth. And at the end of these marches, there was one time in particular, both an Israeli and a Palestinian that were arrested for disturbing the peace, or in, in I think the translation over there is disturbing the order. And so we started using that as a title. As time went on though, we saw that what disturbing the peace actually meant was, we, we actually thought, what peace are they actually disturbing? Yeah. And then it was fascinating because we looked through the history and saw all the different people, like Rosa Parks who did, you know, disturbed the peace and Martin yes. Luther King and we actually found different images of them with their name as they were arrested and we realized that it's a very key component to what we need to do until we're ready to, and willing to put our lives on the line for other people and for causes actually it's really difficult for change to happen sometimes so it's the level of commitment and what we need to walk through in the difficult road that we go but it's also very rewarding reward uh, work that's being done you know so that's where the title comes from, and it's where this place where we actually inspire and ask people to disturb their own peace. What are they willing to stand for? So one of our taglines is, what do you stand for? And we say, we, you cannot not show up. We are in this world, we're here together, and what are we doing, and what are you willing to do for disturbing the own peace for, for, um, for the world you want to create? Would you like to uh, add to that? Uh, I, I just want to add uh, that uh, we invite the people to go to our Facebook, Combatants for Peace Facebook, uh, to join us, to like our Facebook, and we creating Friends of Combatants for Peace in America actually now. And this Great. is the right time, you know, talking about the election, this is the opportunity actually. That's how we read the election actually. 
it is opportunity for people to get together to see each other, to have dialogue with each other, and to engage with each other, and to activate uh, the laziness part of in our soul. Complacency, we like to use, say yeah. here. I don't know that yeah. word in English, yeah. but <laughs> I feel it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. How can people find out more about the film besides Facebook? Well, you can actually go to www.disturbingthepeacefilm.com and access b b and both uh, Combatants for Peace and Reconsider and all the work that we're doing. And we have a lot of different programs you can get involved with, either hosting a screening. We also have an educational program where we want to do a tour with the Combatants for Peace that's really imperative with our university. So if you are a member of the university or a college student, just go ahead and, and request screenings or to get a part of the, the tour. Um, they also have some very important programs that they do with Combatants for Peace, like Memorial Day, which for us Memorial Day we really see as having a party, taking a day off work. Over there they take it very seriously. It's a very um, important day over there. And that's because they live it all the time. We don't even show it with us as much. But it's getting in part of those kind of uh, events that they're holding. And in May we're actually joining, or they're going to, you want to talk about May? Yeah. Yeah, in May, together with a bunch of other organizations, especially uh, Nonviolence Center, Jewish Nonviolence Center, are bringing together a bunch of organizations. We are partnering with them, hundreds of activists uh, from the United States, from around the world, to do work with communities, local communities that under house demolition and all kinds of uh, uh, challenges. And we'll end up with a, a weekend with a, a huge uh, freedom march and uh, joint action together. And uh, this is in May. Um, so there are more and more actions and activities. Last Friday, the newest group in Combatants for Peace, as a local group, we had a women group. They okay. led the freedom march last Friday. They did have two days seminar and they led the march. And we're really proud of that when they uh, stand together in the street, one Israeli girl, one Palestinian girl next oh, to each other. Love it. This is like, I was here and I was like moved, like I don't want to be, I want yeah. to be there. And this is a, our, it's a call for action mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and a call for open our hearts. And you know, there is no zero sum game. That's what we learn. Yes. And if we, when combatants are beast, the main thing that we use, there is another way, if we as ex-combatants, could be close to each other now and talk to each other. Everybody can, you know. Now, yes. for me, after 10 years in Combat and Sorbis, you know, Khin Alon, Avner, Maya, and all my friends, and Muhammad, and everybody are like my family, you know, yes. my activist family, and that's where family. I Family. Family is family. Totally. Thank you, Marcina, and thank you, Suleiman. Thanks a lot for having us. My pleasure. Thank you so much for Thanks. sharing your, your stories, and, and again, I love the film, and I think the story is just beginning. I agree. Yeah, totally. I agree. Very optimistic. Absolutely. Totally. This is Nice Wonder, and you've been watching The Now Man Show. It's going to be more and more important with each and every year, I, I feel. And I really want to say thank you both for doing what you've done. You. And, and uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very kindly for making the effort to make this happen. And, uh, and I'm going to enjoy watching the film again tonight. So thank you so much. This is nice wonder you're watching the Now Man Show. Thank you. <laughs>